Hello loved ones, subscribers, followers. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. I uh, run a YouTube channel, Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Today I'm going to be talking about archetype of archetypes, angels, orishas, the elect, uh, elegba, uh, kind of the voodoo and pathanon. Some of us are working with the uh, working with the pathanons, you know, but we're not really sure how we're supposed to connect with them. Some of us think that we have to go to some, uh, you know, we have to go to a priest or we have to be initiated. We don't have the ability. We think that we don't have the ability to communicate with these uh, archetypes, but we have the ability to communicate with these archetypes. It's all inside of us. And once we start tapping into our collective consciousness and realizing that, you know, all the, you know, all these archetypes, all these uh, deities live within the human consciousness because we're all connected to humanity through consciousness. Everything is consciousness. Everything in the universe is consciousness. I just made a video on this subject on the on this uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, what I'm going to call it? Uh, the universal substance. I just made a video on that. I may release it today. I don't know, uh, but it's really juicy, really good information in there. It's kind of long, but it's a really good video. But once we understand the Elegba, uh, the Orishas, the Vudun, all of these pantheon of our ancestors of humanity live within us because everything is consciousness. Everything is all mine. Uh, and I talked about that a little. If you heard me talk about matter, nothing is still. You know, scientists and physicists have already said that matter is never still. It may look still, but it's moving at a higher frequency. So we have to ask ourselves, what is holding reality together is if everything is moving? Okay? If matter is not real, then it makes you look at our planet in a different from a different perspective it makes you look at our planet uh from a different perspective so but i'm going to dive into our consciousness some of us have uh some of you have been following me on youtube you've heard me talk about car jong you've heard me talk about uh the meditation like shamanic journey i have a video or two uh available on the youtube channel um you've heard me talk about that and how transforming uh, those meditations are and how uh, you can bring back information from those meditations you know you really come in contact with these deities uh, inside of your mind uh, and you can confirm some of that uh, with some of the information they tell you about uh, you know your spiritual growth or information you want to know about the spiritual world uh, some of the things you bring back out of those uh, connections, you know, that, 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 that conversation, you can confirm some of that if you pay attention to what they're telling you. And so that that is what happened to me. That is what's happening to me as I began to journey and to connect with these archetypes because I was the, under the impression that um, I would have to, you know, go see someone to connect with the Orishas, that I would have to be you know, uh, uh, connected with some sort of religion or something to be able to have ha access to these religions or these spiritual knowledge. That, but in fact, what I found out, the best way to do it is to journey there on your own to validate your own experience because it's you that's going to have to gain, you know, to walk this spiritual path. So it's good to, uh, it, it's another way that you can confirm your journey along the way. Not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. But I'm sure it wouldn't be either uh, if you were you were did doing it through a religion or something else. I'm sure it wouldn't be easy that way either. Because there's still, uh, it's still is sort of an initiation process through each level you reach through consciousness. Through each level you reach through consciousness, there's still a sort of a, uh, 
initiation process. But, you know, uh, those of you that, that are consciousness and are beginning to awaken and become enlightened, they pretty much understand what I, I'm, I'm saying. Because this spiritual journey, all of us are our are, are own healers. We're all uh, own shamans uh, to this spiritual awakening because we're learning so many things. But I wanted to talk about archetypes, and uh, we're going to talk a dig in about that because uh, this video is made to empower all. Uh, I, I try to give back as much as I can, and what I learn, uh, I freely share it with others. I'm, you know, uh, I like to empower people. You know, I love the universe to use me, the energy. I love to use the, the, the highest form of universal energy to empower others. So, and that's what I like uh, about sharing these videos. And plus, this is juicy stuff. You know, every time I learn about something like this, uh, you know, or it's happening or I experience something, I'm always so happy to share it with others. Uh, and, and plus, it, it might help you along your path. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's something that you experience, and I, maybe I'm saying something that validates your experience you know you never know so this sharing and stuff is really good for that as well because it's so you know maybe you know i'm giving you a message through the universe i don't know you know it happens like that sometimes archetypes are a reflection of a deep emotions and beliefs held in the collective consciousness of humanity they are expressed and explored in our world through individuals groups who resonates with various archetypes Humans are both consciously and unconsciously aligned with certain constellations of archetypal forces, which then operates through human, through humans and interact with humans and manifest in our unique life journey a path. And see, I talked about that in my uh, in the book Christ Consciousness. I published, wrote, and published uh, that uh, the ancients, our ancestors, have been mapping consciousness out through throughout astrology. This is the way. Uh, they use this in the Bible. You can see that too with some of the characters and then talking about Mary and following the Eastern star and, uh, you know, dying, you know, in the, the celebration of, of Jesus being born on the 25th and then dying at Easter. All these are tied to the seasons. They're tied to astrology. Uh, this is the way of documenting science, consciousness, psychology, this is the way I, and because there was no language to document anything like that. There was no, really no language, you know, language for it, okay? Uh, and so this is the way they would document uh, what was going on in those times. You know, that, that was, the, I guess, it was the the best newspaper, that was the best newspaper they knew. And, they, and you know, I would call it the newspaper myth. You know, that is the way they explain uh, what was going on in the universe and in, in our environment and with us. Uh, the more conscious we are of the archetypical forces with which we are aligned, the more choice we have in how we interact with them to interact to interact with them to better support growth and transformation. When we practice high levels of integrity and consciousness, both service to self and service to others, it provides a deeper connection with the divine mind. When the integrity is compromised, it could create a greater separation from the divine mind or divine consciousness. By living in service to all beings, we avoid the trap of duality and polarization, which can result in too much too much service to uh, self or to others. Okay, so this, you really, you know, uh, we're living in the duality. As long as we're living in this black and white thing, or right or wrong thing, or evil good thing, or good or bad thing, as long as we keep uh, trying to separate everything, you know, especially in religion too, because this religion is all about separation. My spiritual practice is better your spirit. This is the way. This is the only way. This is the way. This is the only way. You know, religion is concerned with that as well. Uh, it it kind of prevents it it, it, it prevents us uh, as evolving as humans as long as we keep looking at things like that that way. Everything is all connected. Everything. Once we start learning who we are, even we are connected to that, but we have separated ourselves from that, thinking that we're not connected to that. We're connected to that through mind, body, and spirit. We are connected to the divine consciousness. Everything. 
uh, and we're going to talk about the trickster deity. Uh, some of the trickster deities uh, is just, uh, if I haven't mentioned it already, uh, is Pan, Ilegba, Iligua, um, Ishu. Uh, you know, these deities have been called uh, gateway. Gateway, gatekeeper, uh, spirits, crossroad uh, spirits. Uh, you are hear that through most of the culture, many of them, at, you know, um, describe these deities as crossroad deities or trickster deities as well. Uh, and I'm going to uh, elaborate on this about uh, for a little bit about my experience, my personal experience. I'm injecting my personal experience and the uh, experience that I had with Elect Buh. Because I, I went through a meditation with Elect Buh before I had a meditation experience with uh, uh, the Orisha. So this meditation experience was quite, uh, it, was, it was something else. Because uh, when I went into meditation on a journey, the shamanic journey, uh, our, me and my guys were on this river on water. And, uh, and we were right, it was, it was running right next to the land. It was a really bumpy ride, and I was really looking for Elegba. And I was like, I asked my, my spirit guys and my power animals, I was like, why are we on uh, this boat uh, looking for Elegba? How come we ain't looking for him uh, on the land? And they was like, well, you know, uh, he got his foot in both worlds. So that's why we, uh, we on the boat. And I was like, okay, the water, that was like the water is spirit. Water is spirit. He got his foot in this one and, and on land too. And I was like, wow. Well, you know, I was like, I understood that, you know, and they was like, you don't understand. I was like, I don't understand, you know, I understand, <laughs> you know, because I was looking at them like, I, I don't understand. It was like, it's a bridgeway. You're giving yourself, this is in your mind. He is living like within your mind. You're giving yourself permission for him to open you up to the spiritual world even though you're in this one okay you giving him you giving him permission and when you giving him permission to open op when you're opening up that world you open him up into your physical realm too so he's gonna have his foot because you're gonna see him present you're gonna see this spiritual uh transformation take place not just in your inner world but in your outer world as too and you're giving him permission and why it's called a trickster spirit is because if you're not careful, if you're not careful to get uh, with your integrity, because with your integrity is, is compromised, then you will experience the uh, the trickster, uh, sort of a trickster spirit, because your you know your your intentions are not right. Okay, so you know that's why he can be called a, a trickster spirit too, because if your heart and your integrity, you know your spirit, you're not aligned properly. You could be as susceptible to illusions. You know, you may not be seeing things as, as, as clear as you need to because you haven't you you, you haven't been balanced. So uh, that's why they call it the trickster deity too. But we go on this boat. We're going downstream. We're going downstream. And I, you know, so many times I thought I saw Elegba. You know, I thought they was like, no, that's not him. I was seeing, uh, uh, you know. Uh, I was seeing images that looked like him, but they was like, nah, that's not him. That's not him. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Remember, all this time I thought it was him, but it wasn't him. So we keep on going down this water. This is in meditation. Now, this is how our mind unfolds. This is what's in our consciousness. I, I don't think, you know, I, when you put your mind to it, we can have these experiences. Our imagination uh, is more than what, you know, that it's more. You know, you just don't know how, you, you, many of us don't know how powerful our imagination is. So, you know, I'm going down, I'm going down. And then finally, uh, I see this big uh, island, like in the middle of the river, like the middle of the river, like it's an island. And I see this big old coconut tree. And I was like, uh, oh my gosh, what's a coconut tree doing in the middle of a river? <laughs> I was saying, I said, what is a coconut tree, an island uh, with a coconut tree on doing the middle of the river? And then my uh, guys was like, that's Elec Bub. He decided to uh, plant himself in the middle. And I was like, okay. Uh, and that's something, too, that I see him in the middle of the river. I see him in the middle. That means something, too. 
And who knows, I might find that out on down the road. I seen him in the middle. We, and we almost crashed into the island. He was sitting up under the tree, uh, you know, cross legged you know, uh, with his cane up on the pole. And he had a, uh, his pipe in his mouth, you know, laughing at me. And then he began to talk to me uh, and tell me some other things uh, about my consciousness and uh, about my healing as well. Because I, 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 I'm doing some healing on my consciousness as well. Because this journey is about healing ourselves as well. So that was an in interesting meditation as well. So those trickster deities, uh, when you see them that injected there, uh, that's what's going on uh, with that particular archetype or deity uh, for those of you that are interested you know are wondering uh, how to contact uh, those archetypes within your consciousness understanding these Orishas and their uh, characteristic traits portrayed in living beings who are from their realms is to pay keen attention to uh, the other people we meet through their behavior action we can, if we have certain understanding, see the personality of the Orisha within them. And that's a good example because when you're reading the book, Soul Path to the Orisha, uh, she talks about coming in, you know, seeing Yamaya and, and some mothers, you know, when she come in contact with mothers, she think about Yamiya, she thinks about their energy and she thinks about what they're conveying to her because she knows that energy is working through them. Uh, when she see Oshun, uh, when she sees, you know, a young mother, uh, you know, a young mother, you know, a very beautiful, that goddess, you know, energy, or is an entertainer or a singer, she think of Oshun, and she looks that she looks at what that person is doing or behaving uh, like, and, and she looks, she gets messages from Oshun. So our environment, you know, these forces speak to us through our environment and people too, because, you know, this energy is having an effect on everything because it's all consciousness and orisha are the most oldest angelic beings uh there there is everything when you go back and look at the sumerians the oldest deities uh you see most of the oldest deities and then the other deities that come into play are built off the other deities the oldest deities pardon me Orisha is selected is a selected consciousness within the realm of supreme intelligence, an expression of cosmic archetype. There is no hate, love, or morality on the levels that we understand morality. As far as what's right and what's wrong, morality is very subjective concept. So again, we have this duality, uh, you know, that's that's really is keeping us disconnected. Most of the most of that comes from. Most of that comes from. Um, lost my, comes from 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 our religious perspective, not our spiritual learning and perspectives. The Orisha maintain the natural functions of planet and of the planet and beyond. Uh, if you have not uh, watched my Orisha audio on YouTube, go watch that because. When they said that, that's exactly how the Orisha explain themselves when I visit them in meditation. They say they're in a part of the universe and even in our mind. They're in the part of ourselves and in the universe that people think nothing is happening anymore. They're, they know that's where uh, the whole universe comes from. They know that. But they think there's not much happening there anymore, but it is, it's, is stuff happening there uh, and even within our mind, you know, so our universe mimic our universe as well. So that's how uh, the Orisha explained it to me when I went into meditation uh, with them. Uh, let me go. But those functions and external processes are only but a phantom reflection of what is occurring in your inner universe of your own body, mind, and spirit. When you invoke the Orisha, you invoke them internally and externally. There is nothing that happens on the outside of your body that doesn't occur on the inside of you, vice versa. Uh, and I would like to mention, too, the first time I did a ritual to the Orishas, uh, it, was, uh, it was a profound experience. I think I made a video about that. Uh, you know, I mentioned that in one of my videos, in one of my, uh, 
YouTube vi videos about that experience when I came in contact with the Orishas. It was profound. Uh, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it was happening. But uh, when I finally went to the river and I did a, a ritual to them and, and said my prayers because my ancestors kept, kept urging me to go. And when I did that ritual, oh my gosh, it was so, I couldn't believe it was happening. You know, I couldn't believe it was happening. It was just, uh, it was just that much of a profound experience for me. Uh, that is the only way you will have integrated your experiences. So you have to integrate the experience. Uh, and that's for what that's what ritual is for. That's what we're doing the outside ritual. Uh, that's what uh, the altars and, and, and things are for. You're just integrating the ritual that you do within your mind, that you experience in your mind. You, you are ritualizing it in your physical and in, in, in this matter as well. So it's an alchemical transformational a stage and you in your behavior you align your behavior too with these angelic forces uh you must study them from okay that is why the only way you okay if you keep everything on the outside of your sight and soul or universe you are regurgitating someone else's experience and information which may not be spiritually correct or accurate did you hear that i'm going for the people they like to keep following, following, following. You don't have your own uh, experience. You know, you just, you're going by somebody else's experience. They, they're telling you their spiritual experience. And you just go, you, you, you do the same thing. And you're not experiencing this your own self. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it may not, it may, it may not be accurate. And this is what we see in some of these religions too. Because uh, the human, we're ready to evolve. And some of us can't connect with some of these experiences. Because all of us not the same. We're here to walk our own spiritual path and connect with the divine in our own unique way. Okay. It said, when dealing with the Orisha, you have different spirits of elements. Not only the Orisha, but the Netaru and the angelic energies and all spirits of elements. So they're all a collective consciousness. The Netaru, uh, because they our ancestors created them. So they exist within the collective consciousness of humanity. So they're real to that collective consciousness because that's who created them. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Uh, and I wanted to talk about a little bit about the angels uh, because when I first got a, had contact with uh, the angels, that was a, a oh that was a beautiful experience. Uh, they explained to me that they live within the universe uh they keep everything going they keep everything going whether good or bad they keep everything going that's why everybody has a garden angel they are the thought process to keep everything going uh you could think of them like uh atoms molecules particles uh and and there is also uh some, some higher forms that uh that that has been released in the universe that's trying to get here, but what they explained to me, uh, it's being prevented from getting here with chemtrails and everything. So that's why some of the chemtrails are being used to stop this, like I'm going to call it, evolution molecule from coming in contact with humans. They're trying to stop it from coming. That's why you see the chemtrails and all that, and you see them trying to manipulate the atmosphere and all that. Is because they're trying to really man ma manipulate this uh, evolutionary molecule, and that's what the astrological uh, the astrological age is about too. Because with each uh, astrological age, uh, with each astrological age, there was a, 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 a evolution molecule or atom being released to humans, a, a different consciousness that was being released to humans that helps them evolve, climb the ladder of the conscious evolution. I hope that made sense to you. That's how the angels explained it to me. That's what's going on here. So angels are, you know, there. And when you see them, uh, when you see angels too, when you experience them in your consciousness, because it's such a, a such a refined energy within the consciousness that lives within us, you may not see a face. You might see uh, in your imagination. Because remember, this is your consciousness. This is how you view them. It doesn't mean that they're not real. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you you are experiencing it in your consciousness. You may not see a real, uh, you know, their face. It might be so light because it's a refined consciousness. 
Uh, it might be real, real light. You might see edges of their clothes, you know, uh, make edges of their skin, but you may, you may not really clearly see their face because it may be so light. Uh, let's see. The angelic realm consists of one mass of consciousness and not as an individual spirit beings. Within this consciousness of energy are various vibrations and frequency on all operating, resonating on different levels, but within a unified whole. It's like various of notes of octaves on a piano playing various sounds and each note contributing contributing sound, but all coming from the same instrument, the piano. So they work on all vibrate they they on very, very uh different vibrations and frequencies, still responsible for keeping the universe in harmony. That's why you have um you got these fairy energies that they keep the uh, the elements all together, the grass, the trees, and all that. All these are a form of angelic energies that keep everything in existence. But they're all connected to the all mind consciousness. Okay, and then there there is a higher grade. There is a higher grade, and this consciousness. You got to remember this all mind consciousness is also it is. It is uh, pushing, urging us to evolve as well. It's urging us to evolve as well. So this other, this higher level of consciousness too, that's being, that's being given to us by this our mind is being manipulated. You know, it's being, you know, people are restraining us from having contact with it as well. So keep that in mind. Angels have no name such they don't have any names, but they give out signs and symbols to those who are communi who, who they want to communicate with to receive guidance and protection and who can hear them. Uh, this consciousness of energy that is seen as angels has been creation with that of the Creator since, their, since before the beginning of time. It was created unlike any other consciousness of energy as, it, as its role was to protect, give guidance at all times. The consciousness of angels was created to look after all the other forms of consciousness that need to descend the spiral ladder and experience all duality of the universal law. Okay? So they're here to help you ascend out of those du dualities. You know, experience whoever is in it, who all that are experiencing duality, you know what I'm saying, of the universal laws, they're, they're here to help you ex uh, ascend out of that. Angels guide and protect all souls, no matter what the level of stage they are, they they are at, whatever their situation, negative and positive. As all people are looked upon as equal in the angelic realm, because it is the spirit they could, it is the spirit they connect with more than the identity of self. Vibra vibrations, frequencies are to angels of what we feel and emotions and thoughts are to humans. So it is. With these vibration, vibrational frequencies of dancing lights, the angels can transcend their world into thoughts, feelings via human mind. Again, they're connected with your mind. Thoughts, feelings. So that is te that's telling you that these angelic beings, this consciousness lives within you. And that's how you're able to tap in and contact uh, these angelic forces by going to the highest places uh, in, your, in your mind. The angel sense of self is experienced more as an impersonal, archetypical collective conscious rather than an individualized, isolated, separate self. So I hope this video empowered you. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, and we thank you so much for being here with us today uh, in this discussion. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please leave them here. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more about uh, about this consciousness and consciousness, how it's evolving, uh, you know, and how they did it through how our ancestors, you know, uh, traced the evolution of consciousness through astrology, please get my book, uh, Christ, uh, my Christ Consciousness book. Uh, it's available at Amazon and Lulu. I may leave a link here uh, to help you. Uh, help you connect with the book thank you so much for watching subscribers and followers loved ones light and love may the ancestors be with you